Hello, I'm Jared Weiss, Medical Oncologist and Vice President of Cancer Grace, and it's my pleasure to be here tonight with Josh uh, Baumel, uh, Dr. Josh Baumel of Hospital of University of Pennsylvania, uh, and Dr. Sid Sheth from the University of North Carolina. Um, we're here tonight to discuss uh, advances in cancer treatment of head and neck cancer uh, from the ASCO 2017 meeting. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Um, any alternatives um, that, that you're using in your practice now for patients that are not good candidates for, for the more toxic? So, uh, you know, one of the options that we use is, well, you mentioned that we give cisplatin every three weeks at a very high dose. But we know from multiple other studies that given the fact we're using cisplatin to make the radiation work better, that you can give it at a lower dose more frequently. And when you do that, um, the toxicity seems to be better. And many people have just started doing that. Um, and unfortunately, while we have individual efficacy data for that, we don't have comparative studies. We don't have a study saying, yes, this is just as good. People just sort of said, well, that's horrible, so I'm gonna do this. Um, and that is troublesome at times. Um, one of the other drugs that we have is cetuximab, which is a monoclonal antibody. A targeted um, therapy. A targeted therapy, but um, it's one with limitations itself, right? It causes a rash, it causes diarrhea, and a certain percentage of patients are going to have a very extreme allergic reaction to that. And in our neighborhood in the southeast of the United States, up to 20%. Mm -hmm. Now, up where I am, it's closer to 5 to 10, so I'm not seeing it as often, but it's still a limiting factor. Um, so if I have a patient who's not eligible for the high-dose cisplatin, it remains a quandary about what really we should do for those people. Right, and no cisplatin versus atuximab studies to let you out of the box to know they're similarly similarly good. And that's, that's true. There's one that's coming up. Yep. So the RTOG study um, is evaluating at least in HPV-positive patients evaluating cisplatin versus cetuximab. And that was viewed as sort of a de-escalation to try to make things easier. I don't know about your experience. My experience that cetuximab is just trading one poison for another. It's, it's one trouble or another. Cetuximab has its own problems associated with it. So it's not... It, it does. Here we may have a slightly different opinion. It's a, it's a funny thing to say, but as long as the patient doesn't anaphylax or have a very severe allergic reaction, I think it's easier. Um, you know, what, what I like better about uh, cetuximab, um, toxicity-wise at least, is that once they're done, the toxicities do go away. Um, mm -hmm. So it is, it has its roughnesses during treatment, um, you know, skin toxicity in particular is the, the, the dramatic one, and, with, and radiation does that too. Radiation burns people. Mm -hmm. But once they're done, unlike the horror of cisplatin where the hearing loss and the kidney damage and the ringing are permanent, Tuximab usually it just goes away within a month or so of when they're done. But no data in after surgery. Correct. And no way to know if it's as good, better, worse, and the different kinds of head and neck cancer compared to cisplatin. So in your practice, do you consider weekly cisplatin? I do. So based on just the logic of how it's administered and from other tumors, I, if a patient is not eligible for high-dose cisplatin but does not meet absolute contraindications, I will give them weekly cisplatin. And is the advantage that you're giving, are you giving less dose or are you just breaking it up? So as it turns out, usually I'm giving more dose. So uh, when I give the high dose, it's pretty, it's about 50-50 whether I can get all three doses in for the 300 milligrams per meter squared. But when I give weekly, I can usually get to the end and I'm giving 40 milligrams per meter squared once a week for seven weeks and that's 280 milligrams per meter squared. Yep. So if most of the time I'm only giving two doses of 100, I'm actually giving a little bit more with weekly. So I feel a little bit more comfortable as a result.